Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Canadian federal and provincial governments are working together to create a vaccine passport for international travel. Canada disregards key pillars of the arms trade treaty by continuing arms exports to Saudi Arabia, Amnesty International raises a concern. International diplomatic efforts organized to halt the Taliban. Colleges across the United States are incentivizing students to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Wirni Institute, a charity in India, continues to offer girls in northern India an escape from child marriage. New Zealand is completely free of COVID-19 and is planning to reopen its borders to international travelers early next year. Seven years after the World Health Organization declared that there is no scientific backing for virginity tests, Indonesia's army stops virginity tests on female recruits. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau plans to call election on September 20th. To start off, Canada's Immigration Ministry announced that both federal and provincial governments are working together to create a COVID-19 vaccine passport. This document will be proof of vaccination for international travel. Health Minister Patty Haidu stated, We will continue to work with provinces, territories and Indigenous partners to provide Canadians with a secure and reliable proof of vaccination, which could be required for international travel. Also in Canada, a continuing arms export from Canada to Saudi Arabia has been heavily criticized. Specifically, a new report released by Amnesty International and Project Plowshares argues that the Canadian government is disregarding international law by refusing to end the sales of arms to Saudi Arabia. Besides the United States, Saudi Arabia is the biggest customer of the Canadian military goods. This happened in the last year when the then Foreign Affairs Minister Francois Philippe Champagne issued a report saying that the Canadian military goods were not likely to be used to commit or facilitate violations of international humanitarian rights law, international humanitarian law or gender-based violence. However, Amnesty International found the repression of rights in Saudi Arabia, including freedom of expression, association or assembly have only intensified within the last year. In other news, after removing forces from the country, the U.S. and their allies are watching as the Taliban continue to seize more and more territories of Afghanistan. Previously, a U.S. intelligence assessment stated that Kabul could be overrun in 6 to 12 months. Now, the projection is more like 30 to 90 days. The U.S. Embassy has issued an urgent alert to notify all American citizens living in Afghanistan to leave immediately by any way that they can. In the United States, hundreds of colleges across the country are counting on high COVID-19 vaccination rates in order to keep their campuses safe this coming fall. Some have adopted vaccine mandates. Others are charging students who are not vaccinated a fee. More are hosting vaccine clinics during their move-in day, and some are providing students, faculty, with rewards for getting vaccinated, thus creating a two-tier system for vaccinated and unvaccinated. Turning to news in northern India, Wirni Institute is a charity which offers village girls who are on their path towards child marriage an alternative route, education. Many parents living in this part of India live impoverished lives, where their daughters are seen as one more mouth that they are unable to feed. Moreover, parents worry as their girls hit puberty that they will become sexually assaulted, stigmatized and unable to marry because of the violence they have become victims to. Thus, child marriage seems to them to be the solution. Wirni Institute shows parents that their daughters can be breadwinners and contributors to the household. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the school has been shut down and girls seem to have no other choice but to marry. In other news, New Zealand is completely free of COVID-19. It will move to cautiously reopen its borders to the international travel, the government stated on Thursday. Since the pandemic began, the country has seen only 26 deaths in total. Part of their success can be attributed to the fact that they closed their borders early on to those who are not residents or citizens. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern also stated that the borders will not reopen until vaccine rollout is completed. In terms of vaccine rollouts, the country has proceeded much slower than other developed countries. Indeed, as of August 12th, 29% of New Zealanders have received one dose, while 17% are fully vaccinated. And so the nature of your entry into New Zealand will be dependent on a couple of key things, in particular, your vaccination status and where you have been for the last 14 days. <coughs> Vaccines are the game changer in this pandemic, but for them to be successful, we need as many people as possible 
to be vaccinated. We cannot keep border restrictions on forever and to be absolutely clear we don't want to do that either and neither. Human rights groups applaud Indonesia's army's decision to stop virginity tests on female recruits. In the past, Human Rights Watch found that these applicants were not penalized if they did not pass the test, but were embarrassed, traumatized, and subject to pain. Finally, in Canada, first elected with a majority in 2015, the Trudeau Liberal government was reduced to a minority government in the 2019 federal election. The Liberals have had to rely on the NDP to pass legislation during the pandemic, tempting them to soon call an early election on September 20th. Liberals could be taking a political risk by trying to win back a majority government amid recent scandals. Thank you for watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.